So yesterday I set up a still life, a basic still life, uh, with the skull on top of an octopus, and I found some goofy pom pom ears. And I thought, okay, I'd make a fun album cover. Um, so I got these. I got a number of shots, but these were the top three. And the red in the eyes here was basically um, I ran a red color gel through a light there to pick up the red in here. Okay, so that was that. That's how that trick was done. And I think here's the photo that I decided to go with because I like the angle a little bit better, um, showed a little bit more. So what I did first here is I increased the contrast by uh, playing around with curves and dodge as I've labeled here. So I'll show you that step. I got copy here, go to image and adjustments. Curves does the same things as levels. It just gives you more control. So I picked on curves here or picked curves here. And you can go into curves and it's got some default things set. So I knew that I wanted stronger contrast. So I just went from default and selected strong contrast and it did that for me. And then basically the way curves work is that you've got this line and these nodes and you can start like adjusting the nodes or if you click on the line somewhere else, you can add another node or anchor point and start adjusting it. But the nice thing about it is it gives you all these kind of customized Pre the nice thing about it is it gives you these preset medium contrast, negative. Let's see what negative does. It reverses it. So, and then I want the strong contrast. So I just selected con strong contrast and went OK. Then I went over to my dodge tool and then dodged and kind of lightened these uh, yellow pom poms on the top of his head here or her head, the skull's head, and then lighten that up. So that was the result there. Then I wanted to select the um, object out of the background here, right? So the way that I could do that is from yesterday's tutorial. You go here, the quick selection. You could go around and you could quick select part of it. See it? all of a sudden got rid of the uh, arm here, or the octopus tentacle here. So if I hold the alt key down, it moves this to the minus, and then I can go kind of like reselect this area here. Just kind of make some adjustments. Then what I did was I went select inverse to get the head and then copied and pasted it into its own layer here. And then I've got some extra black that I wanted to get rid of. So I just went into the magic wand tool here, selected that, and then just cut it. So basically cut is command or control X, and then you can cut that stuff away. So command or control X, command or control X, command or control X, and then that's done. And then it looks like, you know, I've got everything selected nicely, right? Everything seems to be selected, but I'm missing something. So if I look at the head, there's the springs that are here, right, that are missing in the quick selection in the magic wand. And that's the problem with this stuff is sometimes some of the fine details, it's not going to select. So if that happens to you, what you can do is I would recommend going to the polygonal lasso tool and then you can just click around slowly click and then you can I'm not going to make you watch me do this I've already done it ahead of time but basically you click through the whole spring area and then join it together and then you have the spring selected and then you just copy command or control C and then paste that but hold the shift key down so I'm holding the shift key down and then paste it so shift and paste and then that locks it into position there. So you can see there that the spring is in place right there. So what I did already was I'd already cut out the springs so that I wouldn't, you didn't have to watch me do that. So I used that technique to cut out the springs. So there's the head without the springs. There's the head with, the, now there's the spring. So I'm going to shift select both of those layers, right click and merge them together. 
And now I have everything selected right on one layer that I want. <clears throat> All right, and then what I wanted to do was I wanted to take my selection here and then move it over into a book cover or start designing that. So what I would do is I would go to File, New, and I can go right into Print. If I go over to Print, because if it's a book cover, I might want to print it. And then you can just select 8.5 by 11, or yesterday you could enter custom numbers in here if you want, but 8.5 by 11 is your standard photocopier letter size. So I did that. So you could go Create, and then you've got this document started but I've already started one right here. And then again, the way that I got this head over here is you can drag it over into the uh, file or you can hover over the layer, hold the control or the command key down and click. And then that creates a selection and then you just copy that, command or control C, and then command or control V and paste that into the document. That's how you can move your thing over. I don't need that one, so I'm going to delete it. So there's the head. I'm going to, I don't need this layer here. I made a layer by accident earlier. So I'm going to show you a few kind of de quick design things. So say if you wanted some pattern in the background of Photoshop, and I, wanted, I thought a stripe pattern might look kind of cool with the skull and what's going on here in the red. So the way I made that stripe pattern is I started with a blank layer here. You can go over the marquee tool, just click and drag the marquee over. And then I can fill this in with whatever color that I want. So let's say kind of like an aqua green for this one. Then I could go to the paint bucket and fill that in. Then command D or deselect. And then I'm done that. I got the first line in right there. Then I'm going to copy that line, go to my move tool, move the line down. I'm going to hover over the layer here, command or control key, press that, press and hold the command or control key and click. And then you see the selection comes up and now I can select another color. I'm going to go with a more pink color to go with that kind of tint there. Your paint bucket, select that. And then Command D or you go Select, Deselect, or Control D, right? So then you have these made. You don't have to keep doing this now. I can go and Shift Select both of these layers. So I Shift Selected both of them. Drag them down here into the new layer icon. Go to my Move tool and move them down. So this is a huge time saver. Then I likewise can keep doing this. Shift select all of these layers. Go here. And then repeat that, right? So in no time, I'm going to go to the top here. There you go. And move those into place. So in no time, you've created a pattern for the background. That's a lot of layers. So what I would do is I would go to the top layer here, shift select, go to the bottom layer, then pick, click on this bin here or folder or group. They're called groups in uh, Photoshop. Click on the group and then it throws, if you shift select all those, it throws it into a group right here. And then you can call that pattern too. So just some quick graphic ways of working in, fo in Photoshop, right? So that you don't have to keep making different things. If you have an idea for a stripe pattern or a circular pattern, you can do that. So there's that one pattern. So it gives you lots of different options to explore. If at some point I could go make a copy of the group, I'm going to right click on the group and I'm going to merge the group together. So now that's all one solid layer right there. And then I could go and maybe blur it out or do some other things to it if I wanted to attach some other filters to it. Now it's all attached to one layer there. So I could go to filter, I could go to the blur gallery, and I could try the Gaussian blur to see if I want to knock that back a bit. Just make it like a little bit blurry maybe. So some options for you. 
So that's a quick way to make like a stripe pattern or pattern for your book cover if you wanted to do that. The other thing I was going to show you quickly is also making kind of like a circular pattern in the background here. So in this, I already made a group, or I call them bins for whatever reason, because other programs call them bins, but group, I made a group here. I filled the background with black. I made a white circle by going up here. So I'm going to make a blank layer here. So the first step was to make go the elliptical marquee tool. Hold down the shift to make sure that the it does a proportional circle. If you, let, if you don't hold down the shift, it'll look like an egg. If I press the shift, it will do it proportionally. Then you can pick whatever color you want. I picked white at that time. And then just fill that in. Command or Control D to deselect. And then you have your circle made. And then in some of the other circles, what I did was I made I put a gradient on the circle here. But this is a different gradient than I used yesterday. So I'm going to demo that right now here. I'm going to move this thing here to the top so you can see what's going on. So there's the circle at the top. Press and hold the command or the control key. Load that selection. I'm going to go into my gradient tool here. Up here, I already selected a basic gradient. Yesterday, here, I was using this thing, the linear gradient. Here's the radio gradient. Now, yours might not be hit reverse. If I go click the radio gradient, there's other things you can select here. The main thing is this reverse thing. So now if I click, you see it does a little dot there, a gradient dot, right? But if I click reverse and do that again, it's going to reverse the gradient. So it'll give me a different look to it. So that's how I applied the gradient to this thing here, right? And then I could throw, I would recommend, with the look I'm trying to go here, like some stars or some weird kind of lighting things going on there. I could throw a slight Gaussian blur on this or motion blur. So let's check out motion blur quickly. Gives me like a little bit of a weird blur there. Either or, Gaussian or motion blur will give you some pretty cool effects. And then I could move this around. I'm going to move it behind the head here. And again, you don't have to repeat any of this. You, like in terms of making the circle, you could just go down here. Oh, looks like it didn't do that on me. Hold on a second. Click and drag that right here so it makes a duplicate. And then quick way to make patterns, just duplicating things. So if I click, actually messing up here because it's live, but boom. You can actually make circular, circular patterns behind it. If I went Command-T, made those smaller, I could change the pattern up. So very quickly, inside of Photoshop, just using some gradients, some blurs, or whatever, I could start making some pretty wild-looking patterns in the background for a book, potential book cover here. So those are the circles idea. There's the stripe idea with the blur, without the blur. There's my pattern, too. Perhaps you prefer something with actual color instead of monochromatic in the background. Then I was asking some students in class what you would call the book if you saw an image like this. And Ethan came up with Life Over Death. I thought that was a very appropriate title. So my text options now. There is Life Over Death. And then I can start playing around, moving this around with placement. I like putting my text inside of um, groups or bins because then I can just simply go and then start playing around with different font styles and different placements if I want. So I'm going to highlight this and see if there's another creepy font I've got going. I'm almost done. So let's try diffuse. That looks sufficiently creepy. Life over death. And I can try different font colors. I could try different text options. Right? And then before you know it, you're kind of creating a book cover of sorts. 
So that's everything that I really wanted to go over with you was, you know, selecting your thing. Um, often book covers will have a pattern in the background, just quick ways of making patterns and going through kind of design ideas for yourselves. And then quick ways of just like kind of like laying out the um, text and just going through different ideas, or ideations, what they call it in the industry, uh, going through different ideations or ideas.